Welcome. I'm Jennifer Keller, Programming Coordinator at the Westport Library, and I'm so happy you can join us today. During the past year's pandemic, people have been spending a lot more time at home, and some have decided to move into or out of the area. And if you're considering selling your home, Tracy Chevrier and Mar Jennings are here to share insider tips to secure a quick turnaround. If during the program you have any questions, please type them into the Q&A tab at the bottom of your screen and we will get to as many as we can. Now, a little information about our presenters today. Tracy is an Emmy Award winning lifestyle TV producer and Westport based realtor. And Mar is a nationally syndicated television show host, entrepreneur, philanthropist, and author of two books. Both have years of experience selling homes in Westport, and now they are here to help you. So Mar and Tracy, take it away. Thank you so much. I am so excited to be here. I think this is such an important time for us to really learn about the market. A lot is happening. It's moving very quickly. So I know myself and Tracy are really thrilled to be part of this and to really share with you some questions you need to ask when hiring a realtor, certain things you need to look at. How do you create an environment that will not only be priced right, but sell quickly? And that's really the key. I'm going to share my screen right now with our deck and we will walk through and really kind of get to know what's happening in the real estate business right now. Can everyone see the screen right now? Jennifer is good. You're good to go. Great. Okay. So we're going to go ahead and start with what are you going to be learning today? Oops, I'm sorry. Uh, and that is really the first impression is always about how you set the tone when people are arriving at your home. There's a lot to be considered. So we call this score big at your front door. We want to also price correctly. That is key. We're going to talk about that and show some real examples of fails in that area. We're also going to uh, also talk about the current local market update. My colleague Tracy is prepared to talk about numbers there. And also questions to ask when hiring a realtor. Uh, you would be surprised how many, many people ask the wrong questions. So we're here to give you some key questions to ask and the answers you should be getting. And six things that date your home. They're very, very obvious. The moment we call them out, you will say, yes, I get it. We're gonna talk a little bit about that. And we're also going to briefly talk about how important it is to have great copy. And what I mean by that is what is the story? Who is telling the story? What is the important features of the house? And what is really important to put in the copy uh, and not be repetitive? And of course, discovering what a professional eye would be looking for, your realtor as a homeowner, what people will be looking at. And staging 101, this is a big one. And the reason why it's here is because we have seen many times how homes can benefit a very simple staging. And if you follow the recipe and really pay attention to that component of it, that's where you will get a much bigger return on your home. And staging sells, it sells houses faster for more money. And we're going to talk a little bit about that. And most importantly, we're going to show, believe it or not, we have captured some photos of some current listings and the do's and the don'ts. And then we'll show you some real good applications as well. So let's go ahead and start with score at the door. And a statistic is 60 seconds it takes for a potential buyer to determine whether or not they're going to purchase your home. A lot of it is getting into your home and scoring at the door is big. We have it as an acronym, safe and secure. Is the door falling off the hinges? Is there a screen door that's broken? We wanna make sure that all those elements are addressed. The color of your front door is very cheap and cheerful to freshen up your front door. That makes a big difference as well. 
does the door open easily or do you actually need to use your body to get into the space? That's an important one that all goes into safety and how do you access the home? Ring my bell, is the doorbell hanging off from the side of the house? Is it a ring doorbell? Is it a security doorbell? Those are things that potential buyers are looking at. And every little detail counts. Are there planters? Is it freshly painted portico? Are the steps falling apart? These are key moments as people enter your home, they're going to assess your home and make decisions about your home based upon what they see the moment they score your home at the door. So this is very, very important. We have a complete article on my website about uh, scoring at the door, but you, if you can remember this acronym, you're already ahead of the game. Mm -hmm. An important to component <clears throat> to real estate is understanding prices. And we have seen multiple times that pricing, when done correctly, and when taken into consideration the current uh, prices and the market that we're in, you sell a home. I have an example here. If you notice, this listing started in November. It listed in 2019 as 1149. And now you flash forward to May. If you recall where we were in May, we were at the height of the market and it sold at 945,000 from 1149. So several months later, there was a reduction. The reason why I'm pointing this out is that when we give an assessment of your home, the assessment of the price is when it's going live. If you miss that time frame and you play the price of, oh, I really want this inflated price, or here's my stretch price, we can always reduce it, you'll end up lower than the actual price that we quoted because now you're being marked down. And I just want to remind everyone, realtors get paid <laughs> on commission. We get paid for the amount of money we sell your home. If we could sell it for more money, we would sell it for more money. We price it based upon what the market will bear. Here's another example. This one started at 1390. And it started in April of 2018 and flash forward multiple realtors, multiple reductions. It eventually sold for 875,000 in December of 2019. This is a personal one for me because I had this listing and I remember at the very beginning, I stated to the client, this is an inflated price. The real number is one one. They chose to go with the inflated price and what it ends up happening is that that price, when you miss it, all you're going to do is go with a lower number. And as a result, it sold for much lower. So we want you to really pay attention to pricing. Another example is this one. We were talking about a very big number here. This started at 2-2, and this one eventually ended up at 1-3. Don't want to take a lot of time here, but really want to stress that pricing is key. Even in today's world right now, we are seeing inflated pricing, but it is a COVID <laughs> premium. And one thing that you need to recall and always remember is what goes up must come down. We are at a premium pricing right now. People are getting those premium prices, but if your premium pricing is far beyond the premium pricing, you will sit. And that is happening as well. And Mar, I also wanted to interject there too. The longer it sits, folks who are coming up to Westport from different areas ask, why is this house sitting? What's wrong with it? Why isn't anybody buying it? So when we tell them it's overpriced, you know, that's one thing to say to them. But they also think like, well, there must be something wrong with the house. So it's really important that you do listen to your realtor when they're giving you their expert advice on what you should list the house at. Very good point, Tracy. And, you know, when it comes to dictating what the number is, listen, we, we want to make the client happy. We want to sell it for the, the price that you would be very, very satisfied with. The problem is that if that is a disconnect and the reductions start happening, that's public knowledge. 
And people see the pricing, people see how it's being re reduced. And if we don't do it correctly the first time, well, you're just trying to catch up at that point. So I'm gonna pass this over to Tracy where she's gonna give us some great current market of COVID 2020, 2021 and how the numbers are being affected. That's right, thanks Mar. This is the hottest real estate market since the peak before the Great Recession in 2008, and home sellers right now are calling the shots. The pandemic has led to lower mortgage rates, fewer properties for sale, and a rush of buyers looking for their own place to call home. Savvy buyers moved in and quickly locked in rates and scooped up inventory. All this means homes are selling fast and for higher prices. You're looking at an overview of Westport numbers. There are currently 98 homes for sale in Westport, which is really low inventory. And there are 36 rentals. In January of 2020, there were 90 homes listed that month compared to January of this year, only 62 homes were listed. So what caused the drop in the listings? Many people didn't wanna list their house because of concerns over COVID, of people coming into their homes. Um, a lot of people refinanced because the mortgage rates were so low and others were waiting for what they believe to be the peak. So they don't wanna leave anything on the table. So they're waiting until that moment in which they feel like this is it, I'm gonna list the house. We can tell you right now that this is the peak. This is the time that you wanna list your house. Um, there are, most people list their homes in the month of May. We can tell you, you want to start, if you're interested in listing, you want to do it now and get it on the market to avoid a crunch in the May time, because so many people right now are looking for homes and there's no inventory out there. Uh, in this type of market, sellers are getting 90% of what they're asking for. Many are getting full price or over asking price. That is if they price the home correctly, like Mar had mentioned earlier. In January of 2020, the median listing price was $1.479 $1 million. This year, the median is $1.955. So you can see the increase in prices year to year. So what's in store for the market in 2021? While mortgage rates are beginning to increase again slightly, home prices are predicted to continue to rise, albeit at a slower pace. While uh, sellers continue to have the upper hand and the inventory continues to remain tight, May, like I said, had previously been the most popular month to list a home, but we're seeing the demand for houses right now. So list now, avoid the competition in May and June. I'd like to add something to that, uh, which is something that you need to take a note of, is that a true realtor is working 365 days a year. I want you to think about our winter months and how mild they are getting. For you to miss that fourth quarter or that first quarter is a huge disadvantage. So as a realtor, we have many sales that take place in January and February. And that's because we don't fly away for Thanksgiving and for the holidays. We are still very much here doing our business. There's less competition. There's less inventory. And if someone's putting on their slippers and gloves and snow boots and hats to see your listing for an open house, they're serious buyers. So don't lose that opportunity because if you can jumpstart the season and January, February, March, I love March. March is a big season for us. It's a beautiful time of year. It's the spring season. Things start populating on uh, in the market. We, we see the numbers go up, but it is a great time to put your house on the market. So just remember that 365 days a year, we are working and there's no off season. Tracy? Okay. Over the last couple of months, January and February, we've held multiple open homes and multiple, and we've sold multiple homes in the last few months. What we're hearing from clients coming uh, from New York and even within Westport is they are not being asked to go back to their office. Many have said they never have to go back to their office. Um, so whether they're here or out of town, they're looking for much bigger spaces for their entire family with a working office or a place to include extended family. 
And one of the key features many are also looking for are next level backyard spaces. So if you're considering putting your home on the market, start thinking about these things. Decluttering your yard, seeding your lawn, paint or replace your fence, coordinate patio decor, making it look inviting, invest in a fire pit, and uh, those moving from an apartment want outdoor spaces that mimic indoor spaces, creating an essence of an outdoor living room. Uh, so these are just things, these are the little things that you can start thinking about to make your home more attractive to potential buyers. Uh, I'm gonna turn it back to Mar and he's gonna talk about questions to ask when hiring a realtor. I love this part. Okay, so it is important to understand that 87% of realtors are out of the business in two years. That's a statistic that's out there, it's a fact. A lot of them don't have the skill sets or the ability to truly capture the market and to infuse their business sense into an industry that's very, very competitive. Now, there are tremendous amount of talented people in this area, not just in Westport, the entire state. Many of them we have worked with. There are some really fantastic people, but there are also some people out there that are new at it. So one of the first things I like to say is when you're interviewing a real estate agent, ask how long they've been in the business. If they've been in the business just under two years, unless they're a family, colleague, or someone that you really want to throw a bone to, I would say have them team up with someone that's experienced and been within the market for over two years. That's very, very important. Um, a question to ask, which is key, is what is your strategy for selling my home? This is important. Because if a realtor doesn't have a plan of action, and what I mean by that is we're going to put it in a coming soon status. 14 days later, we're going to go live on MLS. We're going to have an appointment scheduled that Saturday back to back. On Sunday, we're doing an open house. A plan of action is so important because that shows you they are in charge. They're taking this seriously and they know what the process will be. How will you make my home stand out? Photos, copy, twilight photography, videos. These are all key things that elevate your home. Great copy, I will talk a little bit about that as well. It's so important that we don't spend the time on the copy repeating what's already in the listing. Mm -hmm. For example, four bedrooms, three and a half bath. They already know that. Why waste that in the copy? The copy is the opportunity to get their attention, to romance the potential buyer in wanting to see your house. What makes it so special and unique that, that will incentivize them to come to your home. <laughs> the next one is a big one. What's your social media slash online presence? If you are a realtor, if you're in any business, if you are not online, you do not exist. Bottom line, it was in the New York Times not long ago, I think uh, they mentioned, if you don't have an online presence, you won't be in business within the next 10 years. This is very, very true. We have seen between Instagram, Facebook, TikTok, all the social media channels are really becoming our marketing campaign. And by being present and by building your platform and by putting out the information for open houses coming soon, we in our business here get a tremendous amount of interest when we're not even live yet. We put a teaser out there. We put it in the coming soon status. And by doing that, people are very interested in finding out what the listing is all about. And let's face it. It used to be a time where you go to a real estate company, you would say, I'm looking for a three bedroom, two and a half bath home. What do you have? And they would pull a book from the shelf. They'd flip through the pages and they say, oh, this new house is coming on the market. That's gone, people. That does not exist anymore. The potential buyers are now dictating and are actually telling the real estate agent which properties they want to see and when they want to see them. They're doing all their homework thanks to Realtor.com and Zillow. They're getting all the answers to the test before the agent even knows about it. 
a lot of time the agent is just responding to the real estate uh, buyers that are really already informed because they've seen it somewhere else. Very important for you to understand that, that the buyers are moving the needle, not the agents. So the next question is, what's your investment in my home? Now I speak about investment and money is one thing, but it's not just about money. It's also about time. For example, is there going to be a lockbox? This is one of my biggest pet peeves because your home needs a voice. Your home needs a dosage. It needs the attention it deserves. There is no better way to highlight a home than to giving a private tour each and every time. No one walks through a house unsupervised and no one walks through a house without getting great information from the realtor. We are in charge. It becomes our responsibility and we were extremely proud to be able to showcase your home and make appointments and show it one-on-one. -on -one. The mm -hmm. lockbox does a terrible injustice to your home. People have to make appointments. They walk through your home. They're unsupervised. If they have a question, they have to ask it later. It's not the way to sell a home. We strongly disagree that you should never, ever have a lockbox. The last one is a very, very important one. Tell me why did you get into the real estate business? The number one answer, take a moment. The number one answer that a realtor will give you in this question is, I love homes. I really enjoy the flexibility. It allows me to stay in touch with design, all good answers, but there's only one, one right answer. The answer is, I'm a salesperson. Selling a home is exactly that. It's a sales job. And if you're not a salesperson, you shouldn't be doing the job. There's a lot of other roles that you can play in the real estate business that have nothing to do with sales. But if you are listing a home, and you are following the proper protocols, and you do not have a lockbox, and you are meeting potential clients, and you're hosting open houses, you are representing the home, yourself, and the sales process. Never lose sight of that. It's the only answer. I'm a salesperson. And sales people get results. And Mara, I just want to go back to that too. You know, we have been, I've taken clients through open homes of, you know, other agents where, you know, on a Sunday, the agent's sitting at a table and I'm walking my clients through their house, telling them what's going on. Whereas we would never do that. I mean, we are staffed at our open houses. We are selling that house. We are going through and showing every hidden gem of that house. And so I think that that's What's so important when you do hire a real estate agent is that you have those people who are committed to selling your house. That's so important because it's all about being responsible and being serious about the process. And as Tracy said, mm -hmm. you know, no one comes into a home without us supervising them and walking them through. We are the, the sales champion, we're the home champion. We are there to help the process and to really establish a relationship. And that is key. Uh, I'll just tell you a quick story. When I was looking to buy my house, I remember it, it, it was so uncomfortable. The person was not interested in selling the home. They were eating. They were they they wanted to do everything but assist me in the process. And when I got into the real estate business and I brought my lifestyle realtors into this business, I really wanted to collect a group of people that had skill sets, talents, and sales capacity. And there's a lot of very talented people out there throughout the entire state. Just know the questions to ask and just know the importance that you get one chance to make a first impression. If you don't do it right the first time, you're only going to be backpedaling. Let me take you on a 
really, this is all about copy this slide and how we call every home by a proper name. You'll see here we have the highest at 2.7 all the way down to 417,000. The sales process is exactly the same. The copy, we, we welcome people to the property. We talk about what makes the property so unique. There's a lot of this information on our site for sure, but I just wanted to let you know that we see cul-de-sac spelled incorrectly. We see a lot spelled incorrectly. You know, we want to make sure that the copy and our best our best efforts are being made right up front and we are giving the home fantastic uh, <laughs> representation. Okay, so that said, we're going to talk about the six things that date your home. And the number one has to be, as a designer uh, in the industry, the first thing I go into a space and I look at and assess the lighting. A lighting is cheap and cheerful. It doesn't take much to freshen up lighting. Uh, you wanna be very aware of your lighting and there's fantastic online resources to update your lighting, but lighting will definitely tell you if you're in the 70s, 80s or 90s, okay? The second one is bright wall colors. I know there's a lot of color out there. Now it, everything's 50 shades of gray. If you're gray, light gray, dark gray, 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 gray. A lot of gray is coming into design. The key is to have it quiet. We wanna highlight the millwork. We wanna highlight the rooms. We wanna make sure that the spaces are being presented in the best possible color. Uh, I do not recommend doing everything white. That's too sterile, very cold. Go with a little bit of a color. You can't go wrong with 50 shades of gray for sure. Mm -hmm. Appliances. Okay, if you're still pressing buttons <clears throat> to turn on your dishwasher, it's time for a new dishwasher. Appliances are really key because they come up in inspections a lot of times that things are broken, they're not working, and then you're renegotiating. Don't do that. Go ahead and step forward. Uh, get everything stainless. Really consider updating the appliances if they need that. Uh, that really dates your home very quickly. Doorknobs, hardware. That's a quick project that you could do. They also um, really can increase your property value. People are steering away from that gold hardware. If anything, they're going more to the brush brass. We're also seeing darker colors as well for mm -hmm. hardware. All good. That gives you more of a farmhouse look. Uh, a lot of different choices. Just stay away from gold. Window treatments. Let there be light, people. We want to embrace the sunlight. We want to let the windows uh, be the opportunity to flood the room with light. Take down window treatments. Um, sometimes if you have shutters, those are fine. Shutters are timeless, but swags, any kind of uh, window treatments that kind of uh, close in the windows and make it darker in a room, it is better to remove the window treatments and have nothing than to have bad window treatments. And the sixth one is probably the most obvious one. It's the one that you'll get the biggest return for every dollar you spend, you will get that money back. And then some, it's the kitchen cabinets for sure. We do a lot of uh, cheap and cheerful uh, resolutions. A lot of times we come in and we change the hardware. We have fantastic uh, painters. We can paint and update cabinetry with a wonderful color. If they're made of quality, there's absolutely no reason to update them, freshen them up, update the countertops. That really goes a long way. Mm -hmm. Decisions are made I, about- Yeah, I, I can't stress enough the painting of the walls, having clean walls, and you don't have to spend a fortune to paint. I mean, you can paint yourself, you can hire somebody who is very affordable, but walking into a home where you don't see nicks or you don't see smudges on the wall, or you don't, you know, there's there's a lot of homes that may have like a little bit of crayon or, you know, other things on the wall or even patching holes. Dog markings on the door. Yeah, Big. right. A, a paint just goes so, it, it goes so far in 
when somebody walks into your home and sees it just looks fresh and new. And also, um, you know, when we're talking about the window treatments, you're taking down the window treatments, take down those big bars and make sure you patch those holes and paint over them. I mean, it does a wonder when people walk in to see something clean and fresh. When it comes to this, less is definitely more when it comes to window treatments, for sure. And again, people really want to see the light. Everyone often says this is a bright room, it's good energy. When you have the window treatments, you're definitely taking that away. So window treatments is a very big thing. All right, so photos that should never, ever, ever be taken or promoted. I need to uh, just do a little sidebar note here. These are actual photos that were recently taken from online. Um, they're public knowledge, they're out there. You just have the pleasure of seeing a well curated, never promote photo selection. So let's see how fast you can train your eye in reference to these photos and what we spoke about. Pretty obvious, we we're just talking about this. Window treatments, these are wonderful French doors and they're totally covered by the window treatment. Just no need, just get well, rid of it. And also Mar, we, we talked to so many people who say, well, I paid a fortune and those are custom made. It's okay, <laughs> it's okay, you can let it go. We hear that a lot. It, it's interesting because if I had a nickel for every time someone told me how much something costs that unfortunately I have to tell them it didn't work, uh, we had one client that did this pink marble and their master everywhere. It was pink, special, Corey, did it, and they spent a fortune on it. It's just going to get ripped out. You know, less is more. People want quiet. Think about a catalog setting. Think about spas when it comes to bathroom. Think about, you know, just very clean lines. You want to highlight beautiful things and you want to hide the unattractive stuff. Here are wonderful, beautiful French doors and they're just hidden. And I can assure you, the buyer is not going to ask for those window treatments. They're going to probably say, remove those window treatments before I close and fill the holes. The next one, I'm gonna pause for a moment because it is one of my biggest pet peeves. And, and when it comes to taking photos of bathrooms, toilet seats, why would you put any of these photos on an MLS listing. There is nothing that screams out that I want to buy this home. Uh, it is a disaster, people. I do not need to spend more time on this, but I could tell you no one wants to see a toilet seat, whether it be open or closed, get rid of it. Do not put it. There's ways of doing photography for bathrooms. That's why a professional photographer will guide you through it. They will make sure that everything's done in an angle so the toilet seat is not showing. Highlight a beautiful bathtub. Highlight the beautiful countertops, the hardware, but never the toilet seat. Enough said on that. <laughs> we talked about color, the power of color. Okay, this is a really good sized bathroom. Unfortunately, mm -hmm. the color is just taking me away from wanting to spend any time in there. I don't want to see this. It's not an attractive photo. Color goes a long way. This would benefit with a good paint job. Paint is cheap and simple. Don't mm -hmm. forget that. Talk about paint and patterns. A lot is going on here. Again, let's highlight what's good about this. It's a nice size kitchen. You could put a big island in here, but there's a lot going on. We want you to curate a professional photographer and a realtor will walk you through curating each and every room and making sure it is ready. You get rid of that green, you paint those cabinets, you put a better scale island in there, you get rid of the heavy furniture, and this kitchen could be a real wow factor. I don't even mind the wallpaper. There's just too much going on here. Mm -hmm. Some of the basic things we don't even talk about anymore, you know that you're supposed to depersonalize your home. You know you're supposed to take down uh, photographs of family members. 
what happened here? This is still telling me what to do on a Tuesday with the calendar, their <laughs> personal photographs. Again, I need to remind you, these are online photographs. This is actually out there. This was put online. This is a horrible way to sell a kitchen or a home. The countertops are full. There's too much personal items. I can handle the refrigerator. It's just too loud. Above the cabinetry, it is a storage nightmare. This does not cost any money. A lot of the things we talk about is not about money. It's about prepping and being prepared. Mm -hmm. And preparing your home is key. You never, ever put a home on the market that's not ready. You're just taking money out of your pocket. Can we make the bed, please? This is just one of the things that drives me crazy. I think when it comes to bedrooms, the bed should be made. There should be no laundry. The window treatments here is a problem. This is just bad. It's a decent sized bedroom. Clearly that's the queen size bed, but everything's oversized and, and I, I don't wanna see this house. This kitchen is a great size kitchen. It's not curated very well. There's a lot here. Color's the problem. It would go a long way to be refreshed and uh, freshened up in reference to painting. Uh, get rid of the personal bric-a-brac and just make it clean lines. Again, prepping, preparing, and getting ready for yes. the sale is key. Also on this, with the collectibles up top on the cabinets, you know, we encounter dolls, um, <laughs> figurines, you know, people love their collectibles and that's great, but you don't want to walk into a museum. So put that stuff away before you decide to list your house. And don't get me wrong, there, there's a lot of people that can't, you know, either afford or move things out of their house. There's a way of curating your collection where it's relevant and it makes sense and it doesn't detract from the sale of your home. Uh, a really great real estate agent will walk you through that process, how to do some editing and how to still make it your home, but also make it sellable. One of the things that you need to always remember is that the moment that your house does not feel like your house and you walk into your home and says, oh, this is not my house. It's so different. That's when the house will sell. Oh, Mar, you know what? In this picture, I'll also point out the lighting. Go back to that one. The lighting oh, in the kitchen. The lighting in the kitchen. You know, um, we see a lot of different light fixtures and we talked a little earlier about how lighting can date your space. Uh, it doesn't take much to freshen up some lighting and to really change the impact of a room. Uh, stay away from fluorescent lighting. Nobody looks good in fluorescent lighting. Update that. Light bulbs, fluorescent light bulbs, those energy saving light bulbs, they're great. If you want to save money on electricity, when it comes to selling a house, get the clear light bulbs, invest in that. Showing your house in the best light literally possible is key. This one I have to um, giggle at because apparently the homeowner or somebody also wanted to be in the photography as well. Again, uh, these are online and they're showing a bedroom and a kitchen. Bad, just bad. You do not want people in any photograph. A dog, absolutely. A cat, absolutely. Pet friendly home, pet friendly condo, highlight the beautiful pet sitting somewhere, absolutely. But never do you want to capture people in the home. It's a violation, it just doesn't feel good. Tracy, your turn. Okay. Okay, let's see what we've got here. Okay, so a lot of people want storage and love to have storage, but what is this room? Um, this could be an office, it could be a mudroom, uh, but when people see this, they don't know what's going on here. And this is a huge turnoff. Um, you should stage the house to be, or stage the room to, have it be something that you envision it to be. Uh, this, this does not work. 
Uh, let's go to our next one, Mark. Yes, but just before we go to that, home offices are getting a very big mm -hmm. return on your investment. So even if you put one desk and one chair and a bookshelf, this space now becomes a bonus and a return on investment, which is so valuable. Tracy has done some numbers um, in reference to these people are not going back to work. They're more productive working from home. So home offices are becoming the new requirement in searching out for a proper home for people's families, okay? Mm -hmm. So this space, it could be a breezeway. We're not really sure what it is, but there's other places for storage where you get your money back for this room, home office for sure. Mm -hmm. Okay, the next one. This has the same problem as the previous slide. It is a turn off. People will see this and walk out. Uh, this has a potential to be a bedroom or a playroom. Let the buyer envision that. Uh, before listing, clear out the junk. Create a keep, a donate, and throw out pile. And really start, if you're, if you're hoping to sell your house, you are getting rid of a lot of stuff. So now is the time before you list it to start taking care of those things. Um, also, there's a dated light fixture, fixture in this one too that could easily be uh, switched out. And again, switching out light, light fixtures, not expensive. There's so many places you can go. Ikea is one where you can get really great lighting at a discount. But if you, if you set this up, like sometimes Mara and I will set up a room with like a little tent for kids and just make it a special space. This is not special. And it's a good room as well. I, I always say I'm no fan of the fan because people mm -hmm. see a fan and they think, oh, it's a hot room. So it immediately questions whether or not the AC is strong enough or there's no AC. So there's other lighting that is more visual that gives the room more personality and character. I mean, this room has two windows. It has a good size in there. You could probably put a bed in there. Mm -hmm. Why would you not highlight that? This is definitely a fail and not ready to be on the market. Oh, a lot here. This one, let's see. We're gonna go with edit, edit, edit. There's too much furniture in this space. Uh, the window treatments are blocking the entire window. Um, it's very dark. You could easily brighten up this space with a nice neutral paint color on that dark wood. Um, I'd say be open to advice from your realtor who will help you maximize the buyer experience when they walk in the door. That's your front door and this is what you're walking into. It doesn't feel good. Uh, once you maximize the buyer experience, you will maximize your profit. So too much furniture in this space. It's all about size and scale. When I wrote my book, I mm -hmm. talked about six core design principles. Uh, two of them are jumping out right now. Embrace light and reflection and consider size and scale. It's a great room. It has a beautiful fireplace. I love that wood detail. Paint that. It wouldn't take much to kind of rework this space. Mm -hmm. And then it's a real wow factor. We want people to walk in the door and fall in love with it the moment they walk in. This is key. Mm -hmm. And then we go from this to the other extreme. Okay, so this one is over-edited. Uh. Um, the walls are blank. You, you can put up a colorful piece of artwork in here. Again, not expensive, but just something that kind of warms this room up. You know, we talked about painting everything a bright white. A bright white is not really welcoming. Um, you could throw some pillows on this couch, some colorful pillows. Uh, the fact that this is a living room, but then you throw in the Peloton, it's kind of like, is it a workout room? What is this room supposed to be? It's confusing. Um, I, we could do better here. Definitely. I mean, you, we definitely give them credit for editing. I mean, I'm sure there was a, a, a process to get to this point, but it's very, very important for you to know is that if a room is designed for a certain purpose, Keep it that purpose. The moment you put another purpose in a room and try to make it multiple purposes, it confuses the buyer and it makes them think immediately there is not enough space. And so, that's like putting the Peloton next to your bed in your bedroom. Correct. Same We've thing. Seen that again and again. 
You, uh, you may have it there and you may enjoy it there and use it there, but when you're listing your house, just move it. Move it or get rid of it. Move it to your next destination. Put in storage. Mm -hmm. um, if it doesn't have a relevant space, don't keep it in. Mm -hmm. Okay, so let's talk a little bit about staging 101 and what a true professional would do, question mark. And Tracy, so here's a perfect example. You want to tell this story? Yes. Yeah, so this was a home of that we were selling. And uh, as you can see, the walls are kind of blank. Uh, you've got a dark couch, the window, the, the shade is down. Uh, you've got the dated oak on the uh, stairway. And if you want to go to the next slide. And then this is what a professional realtor would do. You can see the difference. This is just light and bright. And Mark, go ahead and talk about the changes here. So we really paid attention on creating a story and creating a lifestyle. Every home has a lifestyle and it's a job of the realtor to really embrace and coddle that and bring it to life. Uh, we talked about paint being cheap and cheerful. The banisters were painted, freshened up, they were white. The front door, if you notice, we put the number of the house and script on the front door. We added some hats, some decorative details, some beautiful throw pillows, not a lot of furniture. We don't cram the spaces, but we make each space tell a story. This house sold immediately, multiple offers quickly, and that's the power of staging. We have another one for you. All right, the before you fail. We come in a lot of times and we look at it with a very different approach. This was one of those listings, multiple realtors before us. This is how we saw it. And then we totally wanted to change the vibe. And how would we do that? Tracy, do you remember this story? Yeah, this is really, this is a, an amazing transformation, actually. Um, when you see, I actually want you just to take a look at this before picture, the carpet um the bed the 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 bed spread uh the Love chairs it, 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 there's just so many different colors patterns um it just is not inviting but let's go to the after and you'll see what a beautiful transformation it is and the key is that your eye has to land somewhere and when there's so many uh patterns going on it's very confusing bed should be an inspiration of a fine hotel quiet, engaging, you want to get into the bed. This is the space after the light fixture was added, the carpeting was changed out. We work with a lot of clients um, mm -hmm. before they tell us, listen, we're going to do this. How can we get the best return for our dollars? And we will basically work with them as a project manager to make those funds go as far as they possibly can. We have trade accounts because we're designers, so we could really call in a lot of professionals to get the biggest impact. This house, again, uh, sold multiple offers when other realtors failed. We came in, we gave it a fresh new approach, and it told a story, and we got some great results. And I want to point out also carpet. Carpet is a big turnoff for a lot of people. So if you've had the carpet since the 70s, it's time to pull it up. Um, people walk in and they'll say like, oh, carpet. There's, there's some carpeted areas that are great for children, um, but you wanna make sure that if you do have carpeted areas that it is updated. You know, we see a lot of colors, green, blue, um, you name it, it's a, it's a rainbow of carpets that we encounter and a lot of times they just have to be pulled up um one because they've been there for decades and it's time to freshen up and one thing too you need to um be aware of if underneath your carpet you have hardwood floors and maybe they're not in the best condition but you allocate a budget in the sale price to redo the hardwood floors it would be better to rip up bad carpet and show the hardwood floors that need to be redone rather than just covering it up again hardwood floors are very desirable and if they can see that there's hardwood floors they will invest in having them finished by you covering them up again well it's a waste of money. I'd rather take that money away and just give a credit to mm -hmm. read the floors. 
Okay, so let's just kind of recap here. You know, hiring the right realtor and ask the right questions as we talked about earlier. Scoring at the door, how important that is, the first impression that also goes with curb appeal, but scoring at the door is really when they get out of the car and they walk to your front door. Have a professional eye design. So you wanna look at each room as a professional. You wanna hire the professional that will look at it and really assess it. Um, get ready, be ready, that is key. Never put a house on the market if it's not ready, regardless how quickly you wanna sell it, that's only gonna hurt the bottom line. Use a professional photographer. Everyone these days are using their iPhones and they're, you know, they claim to be professionals, but professional photographers are really the key to selling a home. They have the wide angle lenses, they can infuse proper lighting, they can totally take those spaces and make them the best they possibly can be. And we, I, I'm not a photographer. I don't ever claim to be a photographer. I know that when it's time to have the houses photographed, I hire a photographer. Consider size and scale and staging. We talked about the importance of that, how to maximize your dollar and what to focus your dollars on. Maximizing your storage rooms. People love storage, but don't turn a bonus room into a storage space when it could be an office. Mm -hmm. Great copy about the home. I want to read something that inspires me. I want to read something that that makes me want to go see the house, okay? You have that opportunity when you have great copy to really tell a story. This one's a big one, no lockbox. No, right, no lockbox. Over and over again. Uh, to me, it's just a lazy part of the business. Uh, no disrespect for other realtors out there that want to use the lockbox. Generally, they use the lockbox because they can't always be there. Mm -hmm. To us, if you can't be there, you can't sell it. Which leads me to number 10, your realtor being present for all showings, inspections, and appraisal. We see this often, even when we're representing the buyer. Are you going to be there for the inspection? Oh, no, 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 the door be open. What if there's a question? What if something comes up? You're the person and the advocate for the property. You need to be there. You need to tell the inspector, no, this works. The switch is over here that turns that on. Mm -hmm. If you're not there, it's going to get dinged. So being present is key. Very, very important. Mm -hmm. So we're on uh, all the social media panels for sure. Tracy, I thank you for being here today and being part of this. Mm -hmm. uh, and we're really here to help answer questions, uh, resources. We really wanted to get out there and offer a public service and educate people. It's a very important part of our lives. Probably the most important decision we make is selling a home, the biggest financial decision sometimes, uh, and doing it right the first time is key. We want to make sure that you sell your home mm -hmm. quickly and with all the right tools that are available to you. So if we could be of any assistance, by all means, you let us know. So thank you very much. Is there any questions now for us? Hi, so um, thank you so much, Tracy and Mara. This was an eye opener and I would be one of those people trying to sell a house just because I wanna see inside everybody and look at those pictures of before and <laughs> afters. So, um, <laughs> so I will not be, becoming a realtor anytime soon. Um, <laughs> one of the things that I know that I've worked dealt with is if you do ask the realtor a whole bunch of questions and you don't feel like it's the right fit, is there some nice professional-ish kind of way to get out of that relationship that, you know, like, cause you don't want to burn any bridges while you're right. doing this, but you know, if you just really feel like this is not the person to be selling my house, how do you, what are the best ways to get out of that? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go first and I'm sure Tracy has a comment about okay. this. It, you know, selling somebody's home is a relationship. It's very intimate. Uh, and if you do not feel comfortable or you don't think it's the right fit, it is a very competitive market. There's a lot of realtors out there. The, the kindness goes a long way. And I think 
to be able to say, listen, I, I don't think it's the right fit. I'm looking for something a little different. I'm looking for a different approach. You really don't have to provide an explanation as to why you're not hiring someone. So let's just start mm -hmm. right there. Simply just say, I'm sorry, we're going another direction. Thank you very much for your time. Let's face it, realtors are spending time to do listing presentation. There's a lot of paperwork. That's not our wheelhouse. We don't do that. But if you if it's not the right match, if you don't feel comfortable with this th being the right person, then just simply thank them. I appreciate it. We'll be making a decision. And uh, I really appreciate you coming today. That's it. Courtesy, mm -hmm. kindness goes a long way. And there shouldn't be any hard feelings. And I'm just going to say this. A lot of realtors really get upset or... Uh, don't worry about how they feel. This is a big investment for you. It's a very big mm -hmm. step for the seller. You're in charge. Yeah, I agree with Mark completely. I want to make sure that we get to more questions if we have them, um, but it is a relationship and, and it's so emotional for so many people. And if it's not working out, it's not working out. There are no hard feelings. Uh, we want everybody to feel comfortable. And you know, while I've never had somebody drop me, I would understand too. Great. So we have a question. Another question. Um, you mentioned a budget for fixing hardwood floors. Would it be yeah. overwhelming to offer a budget for a few fixes, like the front walk and steps, replacing a wooden deck, and some hardwood floors, or is it better to repair one or two first before you list? Okay, so I'm going to answer this because a lot of times I go into a lot of these projects and I'm hired not just as the realtor, but I'm also hired to oversee and project manage the projects that need to be done. I would say a lot of times buyers know that, listen, I have $5,000 more. What can you get me for the $5,000 to get my house ready? I will take those $5,000. I will curate the proper uh, tradesmen to come in and do the projects that will really make the biggest impact and give us the biggest return. I've seen many times people spend money and they get zero back. So it is better for you to ask the realtor, what are the key things that I should focus on versus just going rogue and just doing it yourself? Because a lot of times decisions are made badly. So in reference to a budget, if you price it correctly, and the hardwood floors still need to be done. The realtors say, listen, we would have priced it a little higher, but we took into consideration that the master bath needs to be done and the hardwood floors. That's why we got to this price. It is their job to disclose that up front. That way they don't come back with an offer and they say, oh, well, the hardwood floors need to be done and the master bath needs to be done. No, no, no. Right. I'm in control. I told you up front, this is how we got to this price. Absolutely. Okay. We listed a house that needed three bathrooms redone and we priced it accordingly. And it's like, we know that you're going to have to do these bathrooms and these are how much this is going to cost. But that's why we priced it at that point. So we knew we didn't want people coming in under that. It was like that was worked out into our overall pricing. So it's best to ask the expert really, like Mar said, before you go ahead and take on that project, because there's a potential you may be taking on the wrong project. Mm. And how much should you expect your realtor to step in and help stage the house versus hiring a stager outside of the realtor? Oh, be careful. Um, in, in my company platform, we do staging in-house. It's part of what we do. We offer that service, it's included. Mm -hmm. um, a realtor a lot of times has wonderful colleagues that are professional stagers that are out there. Those are hard line fee items that you will have to pay for. Um, if you have that opportunity and you're willing to pay for that fee, you wanna negotiate staging just like you negotiate anything else. Be careful because if a house doesn't sell quickly, you're paying every month for that item. And if anything's damaged, you're paying for that. So you just want mm -hmm. to be very, very concerned when the realtor goes outside and they hire somebody else. That contract is now between the seller and the staging company. Read the contract, know what you're getting yourself into. If it makes sense, absolutely. But you know, there are other realtors in the business that are inclusive and offer that as a service and as a benefit 
for hiring them. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And one thing I will say is that as realtors and as a realtor and I build a whole brand that I invest a lot of my money. If I don't like a light fixture and my client loves it, mm -hmm. take it. I'm going to change it out because I'm confident because we priced it correctly and I know I can sell it that I'm willing to invest in it. I'm willing to invest in the staging. But if you want $2.4 million and it's really a 2-1 number and you want to hire me, I'm not interested in taking a listing just for the feather in my cap. I got plenty of feathers. I don't need that. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm in it to sell it. I'm not in it to house the listing. So be very, very careful. You either want to sell your house or you want it to sit on the market. If you want to sell it, hire a realtor that's a salesperson and it's going to sell it and sell it quickly based upon the market. Mm -hmm. Great. Tracy, do you have anything to add on that one? You know what, uh, on that, I can just go from a personal experience and which I can tell you, I had a um, homeowner who wanted to sell their house at a high price uh, and they had a beautiful piece of property. I knew what the house was going to sell at. Mar and I discussed it also. Mar and I both agreed, this is what the house is going to sell at. She said, nope, I want to list for this amount. I said, okay, we'll put it on. But within aware. right <laughs> within three weeks, if we don't see anything, if we don't get an offer, we're reducing it. Uh, and the house sold for exactly what we had priced it at. So I think it's it's so important to take the emotion out and to use your real estate expert as the expert. We're the ones who are in it. And, um, you know, when it comes down to pricing, pricing is so key to selling your house. You don't want it to sit. And as, as a realtor, we're working 365 days a year. And as a realtor, we're in the business. We know what we're talking about. We're, we're not doing this part time. So that being said, we know how to price something that's competitive and very fair. We mm -hmm. can't fix somebody's you know first mortgage second mortgage you know didn't do any updates you know we can't make magic happen and if that's unfortunate if we could we could we would but unfortunately if if you've been in a home a period of time and you've maintained the home and you've loved the home and it's coddled you and taken care of you now the payback is we're going to sell it you're going to make some money and uh, everyone will be happy along the way mm -hmm. great uh, on that note, I'm going to thank both Tracy and Mar for your time today. This has been such an eye opener. So thank you so much for telling us what to do with our homes. <laughs> and thank you at home for con your continued support of the Westport Library and our programs. Continue watching westportlibrary.org for more upcoming events. And this program and many others are you're able to watch on the library's YouTube channel at any time at your own convenience. And so thank you so much again for joining today. Thank you. Thank Bye. you. Bye.